On July 9, 1947, a new aircraft took off for its first free flight from an airport near Montreal. It would be the first and last true helicopter to be designed, built, and certified in Canada. It was the Schneiser Gottlieb SGV-1 Grey Gull. While it may have been the first to be certified, it was not the first helicopter created in Canada. That honor goes to the Frobe helicopter. It was designed and built in 1937 and flew several times between 1937 and 1939, making it the second functional helicopter in the world. Unfortunately, the design suffered from extreme vibrations and the project was abandoned without any patents being filed. After the Second World War, interest in helicopter technology was revived. The helicopter was the brainchild of Polish designer Bernard Schneiser and American mathematician Selma Gottlieb. They began their work in New York but moved their operations to Montreal to pursue a possible contract for intercity airlines. They wanted to produce a 3 c prototype helicopter design. Unfortunately, the contract fell through when Schneiser turned to Engineering Products of Canada Limited to produce the design. This move proved problematic as the quality of their work was questionable. The first prototype, called the SGV-1C, was completed in 1946. It was constructed of tubular steel and had an enclosed cockpit and exposed tail boom. A horizontally mounted 178 horsepower Franklin 6GA4165BGF engine powered a four blade main rotor and a four blade tail rotor. In an attempt to streamline production of the design, 42 Canadian companies would be involved in the production of various components, the exception being the American built engine and tail rotor. The components could then be assembled into a working helicopter in less than 16 hours. Despite the misgivings surrounding its structural integrity, the prototype began making short tethered flights between 1946 and 1947. On July 9, 1947, the SGV-1 made its first untethered free flight with pilot Henry Eagle Jr. at the controls. He reported good handling qualities and vibration-free control. Due to the lack of confidence in the construction of the first prototype, a second, called the SGV-1D Grey Gull, was ordered and its construction was supervised by the then re-engaged Intercity Airlines. It had many improvements over the first including the inclusion of a nose wheel and a lowered tail drive shaft. The second prototype first flew on February 6, 1948. The high cost of the project caused investors to lose confidence and funding became sporadic. By 1949, the post-war economy was improving and further funds became available. Testing continued through the end of the year as refinements were made. By January 1951, Schneiser and Gottlieb were ready for federal type certification through the Department of Transport. On January 29th, a certification program was started on a cold and snowy aerodrome outside of Montreal. It was the first certification of its type in Canada, and so the American criteria was used and adapted to suit our more extreme conditions. Testing continued for five days and was carried out without any maintenance beyond greasing between flights. Once completed, the Grey Gull became the first civil helicopter ever certified in the British Commonwealth. Its performance, however, was underwhelming, even for its time. It had a low top speed and a weak range. The SGV-1D was then upgraded to the SGV-1E standard with the 200 horsepower Franklin 6A4200C6 engine. The helicopter performed well, but unfortunately the Grey Gull would progress no further. Competition from other companies, including the American Bell, Hiller, and Sikorsky, persuaded investors away from the Canadian startup. Discouraged by the lack of interest in Canada, Bernard Schneiser sold the design to investors in the U.S. and moved back to New York. There he would produce the world's first certified twin-engine civil helicopter, the Omega BS-12D. Although it was another successful design, it failed to attract any buyers and the project was abandoned in the early 1960s. Bernard Schneiser then left the aircraft business and became a writer, painter and sculptor. One of his patents would later be applied to the civil and military versions of the massive Sikorsky Sky Crane. 
The airframe of the Grey Gull would sit on a lot in New York until 2009, when it was found and bought by the Reynolds Alberta Museum. They've lovingly restored it, and it now sits on permanent display in their aircraft hangar. Unfortunately, the Grey Gull was used for target practice, and several bullet holes can still be seen in the canopy and through the skin. These scars were left as a reminder of the long journey this plane has made on its way home. Although it never entered production, the Grey Gull was a milestone for the Canadian aerospace industry. It simultaneously demonstrated both the optimism and trepidation of pioneering groundbreaking new technologies.